Hey, brown or bob, what's for breakfast? Coffee or tea, wait, let me see. I like my eggs, sunny side up. Hey, how's it, brother? Hey, what's up? Hey, brown or bob, what's for breakfast? Gee, Pacho Man, everybody. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Conan Huggles on the Rocks. My name is Bob Babbitt, brought to you by Master Spas as Fuels, Right Fuel, Right Time, Hoka, Fly, Human, Fly, Deborah Wetsu's Katana Roo, and of course, our Challenge Athletes Foundation, our next guest, the founder of Ironman North America, Ironman Hall of Famer, Mr. Graham Frazier. How you doing, Graham? I'm doing great, Bob. It's, it's actually nice to be back. It's, isn't it yeah. nice to be back? Yeah, you know, as soon as you get off that plane, it feels like home. Yeah. And uh, like yesterday. So. You know what's funny? I, I think everybody looks at you know, Ironman Arizona, Ironman Placid, Ironman Florida, and they're just like, well, yeah, they've always been there. And, but there was a point that the only Ironman events that was in North America, that was here in Kona, and it was Penticton in Canada, yeah. and that was you. Yeah. And all of that other stuff in the U.S., people were concerned that, oh, my God, if you go to Placid, then nobody's going to come here. There, there was, weren't there concerns about expanding into the U.S.? Yeah, yeah. The family that owned it, the Gills family, like they had a board and, you know, they, you know, their president at the time was saying, well, Hawaii is the U.S. race. Right. And they thought they didn't want to wreck that and didn't really understand. We didn't understand what the demand would be. Right. right in the sure. sport. So, but I, I, when we, Ironman Canada just exploded, like, you know, all of a sudden people are lining up down the street to get in for the next year. We're kind of that, we're kind of letting the athletes down. They want to do this sport. Yes. You know, so we finally got the go ahead to try a race in the U.S., well, the rest is history. It just exploded. You know, the story about Lake Placid, when we announced it, um, everything happened in fives. You know, we, we, we now, I, five days from when I went to Lake Placid, we announced the race. The mayor and all that right away wanted it. We announced, five days later, it was full. <laughs> like, the whole thing was full. I said, ooh, there's something. So, so you didn't have to go through a city council and all this oh, other no, crap. No, no, and no. you needed 38 permits, one no, guy. The mayor just, I, I actually said to them, I said, what do we do for permits and policing? He goes, just write it down and we'll sign it. <laughs> so, it was, so, so I wrote like down today. my yeah, yeah, so just like, like today. today. Yeah, right. So we just wrote, "Here's what we want," and it was it was really it was a lot of work, but it was really fun, you know, because you're creating yeah. that whole template, right? And, uh, and it was the right place to do it. I always say Lake Placid was because you know an Olympic town, small village. You get to know everybody quickly. Right. The courses were spectacular. So I, I always said, if that race didn't work, I don't know what would have happened. But it, you know, it was a magical event, just like Kona. I think like possibly yeah. that magic. How quickly did it sell out? Five days. Five days. Five days. And then Lou Friedland is like, "Let's do another one." Well, I, I said to Lou, I said, "I think there's room for another one." And, and we were talking about, you know, we kind of looked at the map and went four corners of the U.S. It makes sense. And and I said, "Well, we'll go to Florida next." And I was thinking the whole a year and a half later. And he goes, "No, let's do it this year." I said, "Oh, well, okay." <laughs> On November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we literally had four people in our office, and we we launched Lake Placid in Florida and. And that sold out right away, too. That, that sold out right away. And then on to California, which you were involved with, yep. and Camp Pendleton, which was really a, a, you know, a coup to pull off a race on a military base. I remember our first conversation at the base, because they had a uh, place called Del Mar Beach, where we yeah. were doing the triathlons. Yes. Surf was five to seven foot. Yeah. And you were like, no, we're no. not doing this swim here. Our people are not necessarily the greatest swimmers, and we don't want someone to be out of the race in yeah. the first 50 no. seconds of the event. No, and I remember the base wanted to put it way up on the base, like, you know, up yeah. where their main stuff was. Like, you know, we could yeah. swim down the ocean and, you know, do a, two transitions. And I said, no, we're going to go right down and build a city, you know, right on the water down there on right. the beach. And, and the military was fantastic because, like, Colonel Smith and, and the, the, his Colonel gang, Smith. who I, I still have great memories of working with them all, we went down and, what's your needs? And we built the little restaurants. We built the spectator bridges, like, with the military. Yes. And they gave us all the people. And they, you know, one thing about the military guys, when they, if they were to show up at 8 o'clock, they show up at eight o'clock, and if you tell them to do something, they do it. Like it was, it was a magical. That that first race was a really special event. My my favorite part though was it was going to be a uh, multi, two loop swim, I think. Two loop swim. Two swim. Yeah. And you guys, you and was it you and Lou went out and swam it? Or no, you I did. I did it myself. I swam it myself. And you're like, God, it feels a little long. Well, I, I came back to the military guys who, you know, there's lasers, certain things to measure it back, and like it was yeah. state of the art. I said, guys, I, I'm not the best swimmer in the world, but that's really slow for me. Yeah. Like I think it's a little long. And they went out and did it again and measured it. And said, no, it is spang on. It's 1.2. So the, on race day, I remember Brian Rhodes was one of the best swimmers, and he came out of the water like 
56 oh, or yeah, so, close almost to an, an hour. hour. Yeah, yeah. Close to an hour. And then we realized they go, oh, nautical miles. <laughs> <laughs> Two point four. Yeah, they're military. Was that like three miles? <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, like, my whatever God. It was, whatever is different. But like, so everybody had a little bonus swim in that first race. So it's a great story now. The guys doing it probably weren't happy at the time. Well, and, and so then you added California. Did you add more that second year? Uh, no, I think we decided California that year. So yeah, yeah, and then then it went on to Wisconsin. Yeah, uh, right after September 11th, the year after we did that, and um, then we went to Utah. We had a race in right, Utah, I which that, you know, yeah. we had, which I don't want to talk yeah, too yeah, much no. about. But, but then uh, that went to Coeur d'Alene eventually. Coeur d'Alene, yes. yeah, that went to Coeur d'Alene eventually. Yeah. So uh, and then we added the, the 70.3 started with Oceanside. Right. When September 11th happened, um, you know, I met with the military and. You know, we didn't want to take the risk of doing a full Ironman because they might have to shut the base down at any time. And we didn't want people training for an Ironman and show up and we tell them a week before that, oh, we can't bike on the base because right. something's going on in yeah, the world. world. So we said, why don't we make it a 70.3? Yeah. And, and that today, it's still there. That's what it so is. That, and that kind of launched the whole 70.3 and we added Disney and, you know, kind of created that whole vibe of the 70.3 thing. So, uh, so Ironman, Ironman North America uh, ends up being purchased by Ironman. Yeah. And then... What do you do? I mean, what do you do next when you've you've put on the best races in the planet? It's sort of hard to go. Okay, I'll just go do more races. What did you decide to do next? In my life, it's yeah, in life. In yeah, my, yeah, yeah. No, you know, you know, it's funny. I I don't talk about it a lot, but that was a really hard time for me. Was it? Because oh, that's your identity, right? Well, you know what? It's I've done it my whole life, right? Yes. Like we we've been in triathlon for 25 years at the time. Um, each race kind of becomes part of you. Yes. Like I say, it's like one of your children. Yeah. And I, I mean, I knew every mayor, every person, like, you know, you know, and, and then the industry, you know everybody, and you're kind of just loving. And we were kind of just where we wanted to be. We exactly. had spent, worked really hard. I had 17 years with Ironman to get it where we really believed. And we had visions of where we were going. And then you get the phone call. I never forget, I get the phone call. I was at Ironman Canada in 2008, and I got the call saying the Gills have sold it to private equity. And I uh, went, that's I said, it. Yeah. over. Yeah, then the next call was meet us in Hawaii that year, and I came and said, oh, we're buying you out. And I'm like, you're what? Uh, what? Uh, uh, we got such a great thing. We're yeah, all well, uh, making money. We're all doing anyway, well. And I, I, I don't mind saying it, but I, the thing that frustrated me is like, we built it all, and they were keeping, the guy who was the CEO of Ironman at the time, not Lou, but somebody else, I'm going, you're going to let him run it? Like, he doesn't know, he can't run this thing. Like, that's what it felt like to me. And it was just kind of like, yes. you, you got the wrong team. Like, but anyway, you but know, that's private equity. We sold competitor. It was the very same thing. It was, it was like one, it was the right thing to do. Cause magazines yeah. went in the dumpster a few years later, but it was still, it's yeah. your baby. No, it's your baby. And you know and how to run it and you know how it's successful yeah. and you know how it's not going to be successful. And at the same time, we, you know, two of our kids had moved out to go to college and so you're, I, I went from, you know, like coaching all their teams and the kids and all their friends, all the Ironman races to, oh, I got a, almost an empty, I got one at home, let, that's it, and uh, no business. Right, <laughs> and so, I mean, how much golf, swimming, and people thought, oh, I'm going to retire, and uh, golf, swimming, riding, running, it's it's not enough. No, and I was 47. I wasn't like I was 67. Oh, my God, yeah. So I, um, but you know, I, I, the irony of things is I, I, my first sport was hockey, my first love. Yes. And I played junior hockey and did all that, and uh, I bought a hockey, the Penticton V's, the junior team, yes. where I'm in Canada is um, in 2008. And literally, right after that, we got the call. You know, so I, I, I've been immersed myself in the hockey world. Right. You know, I've been yeah, very yeah, involved yeah. with the hockey. I've been the chairman of a, the BCHL League for six years. I um, built our program. And the same thing we did with Ironman. We took a team that was getting 800 people, and now it's the, the most successful team in Canada. Like, we really put our energy into it. Um, we won six national, or six championships and, you know, highest good attendance. So it's been really fun. And, and you know, and it's, it's a terrible business. Like, it's not a good business to make money. I didn't buy it for that. But it's... Um, it's the most rewarding thing I've, sure. you know, I, I, I've done since you get Iron Man. When you see these young kids go to the show. Oh yeah, we got kids in the NHL now. We got all That's that. And, of um, tons of, they all go to college, to Division One. Then they go to, they stay in touch over the years. And uh, our team that was the best team in history um, is 10 years ago. We had a reunion this year and they all came with their families, the guys. And some of them are still playing pro hockey. Wow. So, um, you know, hockey's been a, a savior for me. And, you know, I, and I, I love hockey as much as triathlon. So I've been fortunate that I've had... Two, two sport, two sports. Yeah, because it's yeah. really difficult. I remember back in the day when Gary from Cliff Bar was about to sell his company. Yes. And he had second thoughts because he's like, well, you think, oh, I'll just go do it again. I'll just go create something new. Yeah, yeah. And he realized that the guy who created Rollerblade, his next thing was Robike, right. which neither of us have ever heard of, right? So you don't, and Gary says, I don't know if this is my only thing. Yeah. And so he walked away from $50 million. There was a $100 million buy. 
and he and his partner would each get 50. Yeah. He went from getting 50 to owing his partner 50 yeah. when he walked out. Oh, I've read his book and I know Gary. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah and so, but that's the difficult part of being an entrepreneur you know, and being a And when creator. you love something so much, it's hard to, like, we did put on some bike events. We had the Centurion bike events and we had one really successful one in Ontario. We got three or 4,000 riders. Wow. So we, we did that, but it never really- It wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. Like you can't go from this to something in the same market right. and have the energy of Iron Man specialness. No. And, and you know what? And you were still hurting. I was still hurting a bit. Like I, I, I couldn't rally and, you know, but you know, it takes some, everything in life takes time. And like the hockey thing, I said, I love it. And we, we got into the film business a bit and we made a, a movie that's on Amazon right now with my kids are in films. So I did some things with them and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I will never complain about my life. Trust me. Like, no, you know, well, I, I've, I've been very fortunate in everything. So, so uh, speaking of film, yeah, working on a documentary, on on triathlon on iron man but i mean yeah, i know you've done a lot of interviews already so yeah. talk a little about what the, yeah, what the goal is you know we um as we sit here now we are older and you know the people that we grew up in the sport with um you know we're all getting a little older yeah and, and uh i kind of was talking with my, my my daughter and son and i said i really think it's time that we tell the story of yes. iron man um, not not triathlon, but of Ironman. Right. And you know, how did this thing go from 15 people on that beach in 1978 to 2,400 here and 140 yeah, events you know, races the world. all around the world and yeah. the boom? And, and who are the what are those little nuggets of stories that moved it? Yeah. Like, is this thing, you know, like if Julie didn't do Julie's, you know, would right. this sport have happened? Right. And I, I, I and you and I both know stories. I'm not going to talk about now that I heard like Rodney Jake, you know, things that things could have changed really quickly that this didn't happen. Right. So. Um, I think it's time to tell their story, respect them, honor, and keep their their legacies in the sport. I agree. You know, I, I think it's uh, there's a great history, and there's a lot of different sports out there that don't make it, don't ever get on the radar. There's not too many people in the you, anywhere you go in the world. If you say Iron Man, they know somebody who did it or what it is. Yes. Right. The sports moved into that vein of it, people know what it is. They may not follow it, but they do know what it is. Right. Well, and if you think about it, you go from. Uh, from a 1974, a sport that's just starting, yeah. right? At the track club, uh, tri San Diego Track Club, to being accepted as an Olympic sport by 94, like 20 yeah. years later, and then going in, you know, being official in, in, in 2000. I mean, that's unprecedented. Nobody no. gets in that quickly with a no. with a new sport. See, we could make a whole limited series of all those stories, like yeah. how the IT, I, I went, see, my wife and I were at the meetings when they, you know, we got in the Olympics. Les McDonald brought us all to vote. Right. So I've been at the front seat to watch all these things happen. We had Mark Sisson here this morning. Yeah, Mark was there. It was like the only way we're going to get in is if we allow drafting. And you yeah. and I are both like us. That's, that's yeah. you're allowing cheaters. Yeah. What do we need drafting? But. That's and the IOC happened. wanted triathlon to go under UIPMB, which was the modern pentathlon group, and go into that federation instead right. of having their own. Right. And Les actually said, no, you know, we're, we're going to start our own federation. Yeah. And that was bold for him to say that at the time because they had a, a way in, but he said, we're doing it our way. Right. And when they still got in. Obstacle course racing is trying to get in through pentathlon right now. Yeah. yeah. But it's, you know, you're going through, then you've got to balance all that. It's, and triathlon's it's a, a big enough sport on its own that yes. it was the right move. So. It was definitely the right move. So what what are the plans for the movie? Yeah, the movie, you know, we're, we're, we've been filming. You know, yes. We've done a lot of interviews, going through all the archives, doing their research, digging into the story. Uh, we're going to probably film for another year till this. By the time we get here next year, we're, the film should be 80% edited. And then we'll fill in the rest, yeah. you know, with the more modern athletes. We'll have all the backdrop and right. stuff like that. And then, and then we'll take it out and, you know, distribute and figure out how to get an audience for it. So so you're thinking Netflix? Or you're thinking that's way down the line? That's down the line. Okay. I think, you know, you got to see what it is. And this industry, it's it's a crazy industry. Like, you no know, it, it changes every year quickly and what they're looking for, what they're not. But sports are hot right now. Like, people are watching sports, you yes. know, with all the Formula One and golf and all that. So Yeah, Tour de France. Yeah, all Tour those de shows France. have been so, wonderful. You know, people are interested in sports. And I think we have a unique story. I think There's it, no question. I and think we got characters. Yeah. Out of, yeah the the hardest part about the film is, and you've been working with us a lot on, is um, making sure that uh, are all the Iron Man athletes in the world. We can't tell everyone's story no. in a movie. We can't. It's not a history piece of who won, who did this, who did that. It's things that moved it, things that made it, whatever, so people understand it and who the real characters were that did it. And uh, you know, so like I say, it's a different series if you're trying to get a history piece, but how this happened is what we're really trying to try, trying to show and so you're running riding swimming still being a try guy oh yeah i did a run this morning um you know when i i don't run as far as i used to i i got a new body part in my hip uh three years ago so i i don't push it but i you know i still get the bug to go. i want to do some 5ks this year right like i still get that little bug to go out and do it 
Um, I ride four or five times a week, yes. and uh, my, my son and I were just riding in Europe for uh, three weeks in all the mountains, and uh, no, no, I still uh, wake up every day and want to do it, but... Uh, what is it about this place? Because, I mean, you can talk about Plass and all the rest of it, but a lot of people came to those places because yeah. they wanted to get here. Absolutely. Right? I, I, I was talking to my, my Sue and Luke yesterday, and I said, like, I, I feel totally attached to this island. Yes. Like, even more so than some of my own races. Yeah. You know, because oh, yeah. I landed here as a 23-year-old with a sleeping bag in a tent the first time I did it. Yep. You know, like, I didn't even know how to swim barely. I, you know, so you, you kind of had this. I came for six weeks. You had this experience here. And that, doing it at 23, went back when nobody had done it, kind of changes who you are. Totally. For the rest of your life. Forever. So you kind of have that att attachment, and the, the, you owe the island, right? It gave yes. you that. It gave you that. And then, and then along the way, like I said, I never would have dreamed I landed here with a sleeping bag and tent. Next thing you know, you're running all the races. Like, you know, you're, you're at that, yeah. you're, you know. You're, you're, putting on, uh, yeah. you're putting on how many races? Nine races. Nine like, races. Yeah, yeah. You know, all of a sudden, you've got nine races, and you're, you know, it's, it's your life. And, uh and that kind of thing. But you know, it's, uh, no, the island to me is, um, I, you know, my wife, we were driving in, she goes, I love this island so much. Like it's yes. become all of us. Like, you know, we, we really love the island. Um, I don't know, if, you, if you've done it, you understand it. Like the race and you've been here and you've been experienced the whole thing. You understand it. You sort of have to. You have, you to. have to. You have to do it to understand you what have to it do. takes. I mean, let's face it. It's not the nicest bike course in the world. No. It's, it's brutal. And there's very few people it's hard, out it's there. Really, yeah. But that's what makes it special. Right. It's and you know, and we've been spent time with Mark Allen here this week filming and, you know, that whole spiritual side, like there's something with the spirit of this island. No question. Yeah. Like it's it's different. No you know, question. it's really a different place and friendships like yeah, I've been here. Forever. I haven't been here in 12 years. Right. And uh, I come up and I, I've had a really nice week of just seeing seeing a lot of people who you knew from way back. And it's like you could have saw them yesterday and then yeah. some and, and it's they're like your you family, pick up right, right? when you let off and they're your family yeah, yeah right there's been so many hugs and great moments and just talking this week and i know it's just really really nice i think it's gonna be really fun working on this movie oh yeah i'm, I'm yeah. looking forward yeah to and bob's been a great help this guy is you're an encyclopedia i'm i'm always blown away by how you, it's like a computer chip full of all this triathlon stuff that you can just go as i told you what my wife said you know you need to you need to get rid of some of that old shit in your head make room some new shit <laughs> no you know what your gift is that you do have that i have old shit you have yeah, old shit because you know what that's the old shit's gift. important and that's I why we're making so. the movie you know it is you tell heidi that you know what old i liked yesterday important. um yesterday at the press conference you know patrick long a what he said about yes. you know he was owes mark allen and then dave scott he was talking about them and the history for creating this for them yes so they could do this and it was really nice for me to hear because that's what we're doing in the movie one of the current pros recognizing that history is yes. why they're all here well and one of my favorite things has been this week there's there's a lot of young guys who are going to swim 46 and ride for hour 403 and run you know run 240 230 yeah. 240 and to have them sit here where you're sitting and say i grew up watching this yeah. i grew up watching grew up this for the last it. 15 years yeah. watching this and and seeing how special it is and they weren't thinking olympics they weren't thinking other stuff this is where they want to be yeah, this is where they want to be. this is what it's all about and the other thing to end it i loved it when he said that uh the we women be should be here. we need the women back here and i um, we do you know and i i don't want to politicize it but i in my heart i believe it's the right thing uh, like you know what? I, this I, is we have a family yeah the family has yeah. men and women and this island yeah and the i thought the best year was a couple of years ago where the women race one day two days later the men race the women were out cheering the men on the yeah. men were out cheering the women yeah. on it you was, know what it is too, it Bob. Special. Like when I, I look at that, I go, Dave and Mark wouldn't and Paula wouldn't be Dave, Mark, and Paula if it was every other year, because they came every year and they kept winning and winning and winning. So you'll never get that again. The rivalries. The rivalries and the yes. whatever. Like and Nice is a fabulous race. Uh, yeah, but and it's, it's not nothing. The world it's got nothing to do with Nice. It's just no, like no. The, it's all about this place. Yeah, they, and you think about it, uh, like a Jan Ferdano lost. You know, he won in, 19, in 2019. That was his third title. Yeah. There was nothing in 20, nothing to do with COVID. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, it's... I bet you if last year was in Kona um, and this year was in... He, he might have stayed. He might have stayed. He might have yeah. stayed and gone for yeah. it. But, and yeah. you know what? And we're old, so that's what we grew up with and we know. But it's... Yeah. Uh, I still think you wouldn't move the Masters to, to Philadelphia. It's in no. Augusta. No. No. And what makes this thing so special is... 
I can't play golf with Tiger at the Masters. No. But I could be swimming in yeah. the same place at the same time as Jan Frodeno yeah. or Patrick Lange, and we can talk story afterwards about yeah. the wind at Javi right. or what, how hot and, it was. And, and the cramp I had here. And it's, the, this exactly. And we're, yeah. We're, yeah. we're connected. We're connected. If we're there out there for seven and a half hours or 17 hours, yeah. there's a connection that's so special. Yeah, it is. It's, it's magic. Love it. Thanks for taking time, bud. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Best of luck with the movie. Okay. It's going to be awesome. Poncho Man, take us out. Hey, Brenna Bob, what's for breakfast? Coffee or tea, wait, let me see. I like my eggs, sunny set up. Oh, Brenna, how's it? Hey, what's up? Hey, Brenna Bob, what's for breakfast? Thank you, Poncho Man. I'm going to give you a racetrack around your eye. Yeah.